ahead and get us started, Paul, when you can. Coach, kind of following up what I asked you about last week, and uh, it seems like, and I know you mentioned this on the post game show, but it seems like Rams was, was getting in the lane more uh, and being more aggressive and obviously got, got to the free throw line a pretty good bit. Yeah, especially uh, there late when <clears throat> we were trying to make a run. Uh, the majority of his free throw attempts were in the second half, if I'm not mistaken. Well, they had to be. We didn't shoot a free throw in the first half. Um, but when we were trying to, you know, make a run and, and um, have a chance to win the game, he was super aggressive and not only got in the lane for himself, got fouled, but, you know, he created for others as well. And, um, you know, we need more of that. You know, I, we've got to do a better job as a staff of, of putting him in those positions in different ways to try to take advantage of his skill set. And um, hopefully that will happen in the next couple games. Chris, I think, you know, if your guys' losses all but one has been, you know, by single digits, I guess, you know, what's kind of the message to the team of, you know, obviously you're upset with the results, but, you know, also trying to understand, like, pretty close in some of these road games and, and you feel like you're a few shots away from, from being able to break through? You know, we were confident uh, heading into both of these games on the road. I told them before we left and reminded them um, a couple times before we tipped that we expected to win this game, you know, talking about the Georgia game Wednesday and then the Auburn game on Saturday, that uh, our goal was to, to be 2-0 after this trip. And we had a good couple days of preparation for each particular game. And um, I say it all the time, and it, I know it's coach speak, but at the end of the day, it always comes down to a handful of plays that um, impact the final result. And that both these games had a handful of plays that uh, severely impacted the result and unfortunately you know we weren't on the uh, correct part if you will of uh, of the play and um, the one thing that we talked a lot about pre-game during the game post game was our fight um, our togetherness in order to win games in this league regardless if you're home or away um, you better have that unless of course you have superior talent and sometimes you know, it doesn't matter if one has so much talent compared to, to the other team, but um, that wasn't the case this week. Um, you know, we were right there and had opportunities, and um, we just didn't get it done. But like I told them post game, you know, I love being their coach. We got great kids. Um, by and large, they work hard every day, they got the right approach, um, they got really good togetherness. Um, they want to win in the worst way. They're very disappointed, uh, upset. and But I don't think they're dejected. I don't think they're like, oh, woe is me or the season's over. Um, you know, they want to do better. They want to do right and, and they want to win and um, they want to be rewarded for their hard work. And um, so we'll see how this week goes. Go to Danny Pita, coaches left. Coach, I know it's only been a couple of weeks since you faced Tennessee, and you know, in a short amount of time, how much can you uh, learn from that game and and going going into tomorrow night? Yeah, um, you know, that was the game where we talked about it in this very room, where we didn't show them any clips of that particular game, and I hadn't done that in a long, long time as a head coach. I don't remember the last time actually that I didn't. But we just felt like at that point, in that juncture in the uh, schedule, that it wouldn't be much positive come about it. Now, um, we're having to go back and watch it now in preparation for this game. And um, you know, it was just a combination of Tennessee playing really, really, really well and getting hot early and feeling good and the basket looking bigger and us getting off to a horrible start. and. Um, and, you know, we just dug ourselves such a deep hole on the road against such a good team that, you know, we had little chance um, to actually win the game at that point as you look back and watch it. But, um, you know, we're, we're, I think we've gotten better since then. Uh, you know, we're not getting them at the right time, if you will. Certainly when we saw the result Saturday afternoon before our game, we were focused on our game, but we're humans, and we're like, well, that probably wasn't the best um, outcome for us, considering um, 
you know, it was their first loss in SEC play, and it was a home. And I'm sure Coach Barnes and the staff are rallying the troops and, um, you know, trying to get that taste out of their mouth. But, you know, it is what it is. And um, in the end, that kind of stuff kind of dissipates pretty quickly. Now, it would probably help with their focus and their preparation. But, you know, the rah-rah motivation stuff kind of goes away, in my opinion. That's after the first few minutes of the game. And then you play and execute and compete and, you know, fall back on your training. Go to second row and Theo to coach's right. Tolu Smith has played every game this season. What has he done this year, if anything, to manage his workload? And how much has staying healthy kind of helped his confidence after what he went through last year? Yeah, I wasn't here last year. And uh, I can't really comment on how much that's affected his confidence. Um, you know, we don't talk about load management around here. Um, you know, we're very careful with the time that we spend on the floor in terms of um, the physical part of practice and just not being on your feet too long. Uh, very conscious of where we're at in the season and try to keep a feel and a vibe of, you know, how long we need to go depending on where we're at. And then certainly um, when we're in practice, um, you know, I'll pull a guy or two uh, if they got a little injury that they're nursing or we feel like they played heavy minutes the last game, but um, you know, we're not at a point where we're concerned about anyone in the program, but, um, but again, you know, uh, knock on wood, certainly happy, uh, with the health of him and our team, um, for that matter. And, um, you know, hopefully he feels good about it. Back to Steph. I was the last couple home games, big crowds, and I think they're planning a black hour for the game tomorrow. I guess when you took the job here, how much of a point of emphasis was that to try to get, you know, fans back and, and pack the hump? Yeah, I think every new coach, you know, at some point probably when they arrive, you know, pleads with the fans of, you know, giving us a chance and, you know, preaching style of play. And uh, now that I've been here for months, you know, I, I truly feel that our style of play, you know, uh, for the most part mimics the community in terms of uh, a blue collar mentality and, you know, roll our sleeves up and get after it every day. And I think the people uh, that I've, met and um, talk with and got to know, you know, share that same uh, approach for the most part. And um, our crowds in the SEC play have been awesome. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. They've been sold out. Now that their students are back, you know, we're, we're hopeful that, um, you know, the academics uh, semester just starting tomorrow, so they shouldn't have too big a workload. They should don't have that excuse. And uh, hopefully we can do a good job in our marketing department to make sure the awareness is there. And because um, when the students are here, it's just a different feel. And that's what, what I've focused on since I've been here is trying to build relationships with uh, the student body and um, the different groups on campus and being visible and having our guides understand the importance of, of their relationships with their fellow students. And um, it, it's been good. You know, the Greek systems, um, we've worked with them and we'll continue to do that. We've got some couple new ideas that probably haven't been done around here, or at least for a long, long time. And um, as, as the semester unfolds, you know, we're going to try to find ways to connect connect um, with different groups across campus because in the end it, it makes a huge difference. It made a huge difference against Ole Miss when we were down in the second half and we made our run. Um, you know, the crowd got involved and swallowed them up, made them call a timeout and it really changed the mood of the game. So um, obviously pleased with, you know, the crowds the first two games and I know you know, we, we've obviously lost um, some games recently, but hopefully um, uh, the community and our fan base will continue to support um, these guys that are playing and competing at such a high level. Paul? I'm sure you expected some rust with him being out so long, but your thoughts of, of Sean and what he's been able to do since he's been back? Yeah, unfortunately, it was an injury that took uh, a long time to uh, get back on the court. So, like you said, he, he's still rusty, but uh, he's looking more and more like himself in practice. And then he got some run, like you said, against Auburn. And, um, you know, he did some good things. I mean, he's he's athletic and he's long and he's active and he gets his hands on a lot of balls on both ends of the court. Um, you know, I, I felt all as if I was watching a freshman out there, you know, and, and – all those games that he missed and all those practices as he missed was, you know, just tough because, you know, a guy like that needs all the experience that he can get. And unfortunately, he wasn't uh, available to do that. So he's a little behind where I thought he would be um, at this point. But, um, 
you know, the offense is he just he's got to slow down a little bit, you know, when he has the ball in his hands, like like a lot of guys do. But um, it's, it's certainly nice to have him available again. Does that take uh, kind of picking that back off of that? Um, does that kind of take away some minutes from Kamani, or, or is there a place for both of them in the rotation? Yeah, you know, we got enough guys that can play multiple positions at this point in the season, and they've learned multiple spots, you know, in our system. So um, we have flexibility with that. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, Kamani, Sean, MJ are all going to be really good college players. And – it's tough some nights because I'm not sure which one I should give the nod to. And it's just a feel thing. Um, I think I think we all wish it would be a little bit different at this point, but that's where it's at. And, you know, uh, I'd love, and I said earlier as we started this uh, second half of the season after Christmas break that we probably needed to play more guys because we got a little wore down um, the last segment of, of the first semester and non-conference portion of the schedule and um, I still feel the same you know we're trying to get more guys in the game especially early so we can be right at the end of the game with a chance to win the game um, but I don't believe that it's one or the other um, they can play together you know uh, now experience and inexperience and all that comes into play with, with playing a bunch of guys together like that. But um, we have enough guys um, across the, the matrix, if you will, that we can move pieces around where it's not just picking one or the other. Steph, go ahead and wrap us up. I know we talked a lot about you know how important it was to, to get Tolu to come back you know this year, but you also had a pitch to, to get Shaq to come back, I guess, now that He's kind of healthy and seems like he's stringing together some nice performances. I guess, you know, what was your pitch to him to, to convince him that, you know, he would be a fit in this system? Um, gosh, you're, you're uh, testing my memory. It's been a long time since I was in that mode. When I first got here, it was, I was in that mode 24-7 uh, with a lot of guys, you know, with a lot of guys. And certainly Shaq was one of them. As we all know, he put his name in the portal and um, very grateful when he made the decision to stay and just sold him on, you know, what our daily would be, sold him on our style of play, um, sold him on the vision that we had um, for our program and um, that we felt he could be a huge part of it. And he is, you know, he obviously had some injuries as well and it slowed him down a little bit. But, um, you know, he plays starter minutes. You know, he, he's a starter in my mind. It's just I like having someone that we can bring off the bench that can play multiple positions, the one and the two, and provides a scoring punch. I've always um, loved having someone that we could bring off the bench that was deserving of a starter position but and played starter minutes but brought some offensive punch, you know, off the bench. Sometimes I feel like if you're limited offensively and you start your five uh, best scorers that when, when you have to sub, you know, uh, it doesn't help the team as much as because uh, ultimately you're going to get off to some poor starts, especially on the offensive end at different times. And so to be able to have the luxury of bringing guys off the bench that can score the ball and and that's kind of, you know, where Shaq fits in. But, um, you know, I like where he's at. Um, you know, he, he's a uh, he gets his hands on a lot of balls. He's got great defensive instincts. We're still working with him and of not relying on them all the time and trying to, um, you know, keep with our principles and, and not, you know, maybe being as, as, as gambling as he is at times and gets out of position. Um, but certainly uh, he fits with uh, us trying to turn people over with his instincts in his hands. Yeah, I mean, it's been clear since he's been here, Cam Matthews brings a ton of, of energy on the court and, and you know you look at the plus minus ratios he's usually in the plus category especially when y'all win he leads he does us. a lot of good things but how how thin of a line is that from from bringing that injury energy and and being over aggressive you know we've seen him in the sec a couple of times get a couple of quick fouls yeah. kind of take him out how how thin is that line there yeah there's a line and you know, he actually leads us in, in plus minus for the season and um, probably a pretty good margin, to be honest with you. Um, it hurts us when, you know, he's not on the floor playing his regular minutes because everyone, like you folks that have watched us all year long, know what he's doing for us, not even just in the stat sheet, just his defense, his energy, his switchability. Um, you know, he's rebounding the ball a little bit better now after we've had some discussions about, you know, what he needs to do for our, for our team. And um, it is a fine line. I mean, 
you'd have to really sit with one of us to, to break it down. But there were two or three occasions on defense where, um, you know, he just left his man to, to try to, you know, make a play, you know, for, for his team. And, um, you know, we paid for it. You know, he just left his man, a guy cut, and they got, they got him. Or he left his man, and they kicked it to Williams on the wing, and, and he made the three. And, you know, he just he got a little bit um, aggressive. And I want our team to be aggressive. We have to be aggressive. We have to turn people over. We have to score off our defense. But it's a fine line. Same thing on the other end. You know, we've given him more freedom probably than he ever has to – to get rebounds and push the ball and, and be somewhat of a creator on offense and, you know, get in that lane and, and try to get to the line and get to the rim and draw help. And, um, you know, when he makes good decisions, he's really good at it. But there's times where he gets super aggressive and charges and, you know, uh, throws some errant passes. But um, he's learning. You know, he's learning. He's gotten better at it. Um, but, but he's certainly a valuable piece of uh, what we're trying to do this year. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. All right, guys.